We think of SOKI as, uh, as kind of the voices of the community. We don't have on staff writers. Everything in SOKI is written by somebody in the community. A contributor. Right. And so there will sometimes be 30 or 40 different voices in SOKI happenings in a month's issue. Being in, in local news, and I spent many years of my career in local news, uh, the impact that you have on a community is a, a huge responsibility. Being in the communications business and sharing information is, is a responsibility that I, we take seriously at Soki, and I think you know, most people in the business do. You were, did, did that influence you taking over Soki Happenings for that local voice? You know, it, it did and it didn't. Uh, Soki came to us uh, as a reference from a friend. Uh, David and Carrie Francis started Soki Happenings in 2007, and they were wanting to move uh, out west, I believe, to be near their children, but they didn't want the magazine to die. They loved it. It, it had been a a personal success to them and so they started searching for somebody who would take it over and maybe love it the way they had. So we've always said we adopted it. We didn't purchase it, we adopted it and brought it into our fold of small businesses and have really enjoyed the local flavor that, that Soki brings to the community. Soki Happenings is really, well, you come from a, like you say, broadcast and print background, but Soki Happenings, you don't, you don't have a staff. It's not like you have a newsroom or you have a, I mean, they're all contributors. Soki actually has no employees at all. Everybody who works for Soki is a contractor who does it mostly for love. I mean, granted, everybody makes a little money out of it, but it's mostly just because we really enjoy doing it. It's a great service to the community. During a month's time, there might be uh, 40 different voices in Soki. We don't have staff writers. Everything in Soki, except maybe my column, is from an area person who has something important to share that they're- A story they're, to tell. Yeah, really. And so uh, that's, that's what's in there. We call it the voices of the community. That's what Soki's all about, along with the uh, eight to 10 page calendar of events that often has 750 to 1,000 events during the month. Uh, from all around the from area? all around oh the area. Oh gosh, I never counted, but that's really a lot. It is, and we yeah. work really hard on that. Well, but so it's a free magazine, which in this day and time when a lot of newspapers are closing their shops because they just can't sustain it, um, do you think it'll always be free, Soki? Happens? Oh, Soki, the magazine being delivered into uh, readers' hands or them picking it up uh, will always be free. I, I don't see a time when uh, it would be charged. It, ju it just, that would not be a business model that would be successful in today's world and probably not in the future. The thing that we're so proud of is the, the love and demand for the magazine has actually grown during these challenging times. So Tim Hurst, thank you, editor, owner of Soki Happenings. And we're here at Art Matters, a, a special shout out to Teresa Christmas for letting us come here and enjoy a cup of coffee for me and water for That's you, true. for sure. This is Coffee Near Me, coming to you from Art Matters, just off the square in downtown Bowling Green. I'm Barbara Deeb, joined by Tim Hurst, and we appreciate you joining us. Remember, you can keep the conversation going. Who would you like to sit down and have a cup of coffee with? Let us hear. Thanks, appreciate you.